All right, it is uh, five o'clock and we have a quorum. So uh, we will begin the Zoning Board of Appeal meeting at seven o'clock on June 11th. And the first order would be to approve the minutes from the last meeting. That would be uh, January 23rd. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Are there any changes or comments, considerations? None here. Okay. Uh, without any, any comments, then uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Or I, I guess I, I should ask somebody if someone wants to make a motion. I was not at the meeting, I'm sorry. I have motion to approve. And when you, um, um, when you, um, we should actually do a little bit of background. I'm sorry, I didn't expect you to jump into minutes right away. Um, oh, okay. Just some procedure quickly. Um, so, uh, Paul Reisliger is serving as, as the mayor's appointment for chair, uh, which is something the state statute provides. So, Paul Reisliger is chair for the next year of the board. Hi, do you want to go potty? Come on. Oh, sorry, but <laughs> You might want to make yourself if you are, yeah. <laughs> Also, I wanna say that we are video recording the meeting so that uh, just as we do with all of our Zoom meetings so that they are accessible, more accessible to the public uh, afterwards. Um, and those get uploaded to our YouTube channel. So I wanna mention that as well. Um, and we have a new member, Dave Schultz, who I uh, don't know if he, oh, there he is. So Dave, maybe if you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and, and, and say something, then, then you will be, pop up on people's screens. Um, do you know how to unmute yourself? So far, he has not done it. So, Dave, there he is. How's that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Very good. I'm Dave Schultz, and I'm a new member to the board. Moved to Middleton about uh, last March, and happy to be here on a retirement basis, and uh, very involved in municipal government back in Lake Dalton, Wisconsin, and look forward to be a part of this group. Welcome, Dave. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, welcome, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe you can each uh, introduce yourself quickly, each zoning board member. Um, um, uh, Mr. Aronica, how about you first, since you're alphabetical first? Okay. Uh, I'm John Aronica. I live in uh, Middleton, um, Milton Hills. We moved here in uh, 2016 from Connecticut, and uh, I've been a member of the board since I think. Um, just last year? Yeah, just last year. Yeah. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, participating, and uh, I'm a realtor in town. And uh, Justin, you're alphabetically next. Hi, guys. Uh, can you see me? Hear me? Yep. There you are. Perfect. Hey, guys. I'm Justin Bowig. Um, I've been a resident of Middleton since 2012, 13, somewhere in there. Um, I'm an architect in the community and I've been part of the zoning board for I think a couple of years now, probably mm -hmm. 2018. Does that sound right? Maybe even a little longer. And I take it you're using maybe longer. I take it you're using a kid's uh, login, Zoom login. Oh, it says Peyton. Yup, this is what my daughter uses for her school. <laughs> okay. So so thank you. Next we have uh, um, I guess uh, Bob, if you're online, I haven't seen you yet. Bob you Mangus. Me? Bob Mangus. Oh, there you are. Okay, I just wasn't. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. There you no, go. I, I've been here since the beginning. Okay. Um, Bob Mangus, and I've been serving on this board for about a year. I've lived in Middleton since 1995, and also am an architect, and uh, um, have been my career going on 36 years. So uh, enjoy helping out on this committee. And congratulations on your promotion. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but since we have a new member, uh, Dave Schultz is, is an alternate now. So you got promoted to regular member. All right, thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, and next we have uh, the, the first alternate, the promotion to first alternate is uh, Katie Nelson. Katie's there, but she's muted. She's still muted. Here, Here I am. 
<laughs> Sorry about there the doggy, the doggy command earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Katie Nelson. I'm a business owner here in town. I own Zuka Pilates and I'm an alder for the third district. And I've been on the zoning board of appeals for two or three years, Mark? A couple um, of years? Yeah, a couple of years, I would guess. Yeah, just before um, you became a council member. Yeah, so uh, my question for tonight is, uh, is everyone who needs to vote on board tonight? Or will you need me to vote? So, um, I think we have all, all seven members present with the two alternates. Um, just cool. a sec, let me double check here. So in other words, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and Schultz is new. So Dave is here. Uh, Mark Wolford, I think, is here too. Yep, Mark's there. Yeah, I think so. We have seven people. And does anybody okay. is anybody wishing to um, or planning to abstain for any reason? We could ask that too. Um, on on either of the two applications, does anyone have a conflict of interest that would uh, cause the alternates to um, have a chance to vote? And hearing none. Uh, technically, that means alternates could be excused if they wish, but you're certainly welcome to stay and um, if for some reason, you know, and be part of the deliberative process. It's just you, you wouldn't be voting. You wouldn't be voting unless somebody doesn't vote. So, so in theory, if somebody gets bumped off the Zoom call, I guess in theory, then an alternate member would vote. So I know, Dave, are, are you planning on staying? Yes, I'd like to stay. Okay. So, Katie, if you, um, Wish to, I, I, I will plan on uh, staying for the meeting, so okay. that's okay. Okay, yep, it is. But since you asked the question, I thought maybe you were. Yeah. Wondering, uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I um, didn't know if you need to go on with more introductions. So thank you. Um, we have Paul Reisliger as chair. Uh, he's already introduced himself. Right. Uh, you've been on for a few years, Paul, right? Yes. And then last but not least is Mark Wolford. Mark Wolford, yeah. Resident. I can't even remember how many years, but I've been on the board for what, 10 or 12 years? Something like that? Seems like 20. Seems like 20, all right. <laughs> so, I don't know, I've been on it for a while. I'm just teasing you. Good to see everybody. Yep, so that's introductions. Since we had mm -hmm. new members, I thought that would be appropriate now if you wanna to go to the, and I don't think I have any other instructions. I, I did announce that this is being recorded um, mm -hmm. and I had sent you earlier some you know, as a reminder with the zoning handbook that, that Stevens Point and W. Stevens Point puts out uh, containing procedures and all that, you've had a chance to review that. So mm -hmm. I'll turn it back over to you, Paul, and, and why don't you go back to the minutes? All right, no, Mark, thanks for uh, pausing me there. My exuberance, I started ripping right into the agenda. Um, so does, can someone uh, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 23rd? I'll make that motion. I motion, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from our last meeting. Okay, uh, can someone second? I'll uh, second. second. Okay. Um, I didn't hear, who, who are you recognizing as the second, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Justin. Okay. That's fine, yeah, I think John and I both talked at the same time, so. Oh, you did, okay. <laughs> it won't be the first time. No. Probably not, no. <laughs> Okay, so then moving on to our first. You, should, you, you need to call for a vote on the minutes. Oh, I, thanks. Uh, can, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mark, aye. Any yeah. nays? There you go. Hey, okay. before we start with the first agenda item, I'd mm -hmm. like to uh, make a motion. And that is that the Zoning Board of Appeal uh, thanks Marty. Burkhalder for 11 years of service to the board. I uh, second that motion. Sure, it's not on the agenda, but we'll put it. Uh, Figure about, out a place for uh, it. I'd well, like to recognize the introductions and call to order. Uh, can we just, instead of making it as a motion, can we just? Um, uh, request well. Can it be part the of the desert. public comments? Yeah, well, there aren't public. Oh, well, good. no, not on the. How about we, uh, Mark? I, first of all, I, I think it's a great sentiment. Um, but I think if we do it after the introductions, um, we'll say zoning board members um, uh, 
uh, express their, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but why don't you, mm -hmm. let's put it in that way. So go ahead and, sure. and say what you were going to say. I just, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals would like to, to thank uh, Marty Burkhalder for 18 years of service to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And if you want to put it at the end, after we close the meeting and just say okay. it as a, an aside or something, just as long as it kind of gets on the record. And if we were all together, we could have had a card or something for you to sign, but we, but we'll, I'll make sure this gets extended to him. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Mark, one, one other thing. So, so Paul is the new chair. Is there, has there anybody moved into Paul's, um, the vice chair. Um, the vice so, chair role. Do we need to vote on that, or I mean, has things changed that that's appointed now? Well, um, good question. So we, I looked at state statute recently this past week um, when I was trying to get materials together for Mr. Schultz, and I thought well, this is a good chance just to review state statute. And I was surprised to see that it says the mayor appoints the chairperson. It does not say anything about the vice chair. Um, I don't see any harm in, I mean, we don't have it on the agenda right now, but I think if Paul were not present, you would then, you know, at a future meeting, I think you could then just uh, elect an acting chair. That's, it does, I think there's reference to that in state statute. Um, so right now I don't see a need to have a, a, a vice chair and electing one now would not be appropriate, but I'll, I'll look into that again and um, we'll figure that out for the next meeting. So this was kind of a last minute. Uh, okay. I had planned to have election of officers until I saw that language in state statute. The reason I really wasn't familiar with it is because Dr. Waginke had been chair of this for over two decades and it just never came up. And then when he left, then you guys had an election like we do all of our committees or most of our committees. So, but now that I know, I, so I asked the mayor to appoint uh, a member and he chose, uh, he selected Paul. So, I think you made a wise okay. choice. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, um, so we can add that as a, a future agenda item to uh, uh, vote for a vice chair. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Any other comments before we move on to our first agenda item? No. no. Okay. So uh, moving on to our first agenda item for uh, June 11th, Mark, could you uh, review the application, please, at 2501 Middleton Beach Road? Sure. Um, so are, this is part of the, are you opening the hearing? Yes, I'm opening the hearing. Okay. So the hearing's opened at 512. 512. Okay. So what we have before us tonight is an application for a variance from, um, Michelle Bond of 2501 Middleton Beach Road. Uh, she's requesting a variance from the minimum rear setback for an R1 zone property for the purpose of constructing a deck exceeding four feet in height above ground level. I will add that um, it, her property, it largely consists of stairs, but I have determined uh, that we are treating that the same as a deck um, under the provision of, of um, a deck and stairs encroaching into the rear yard. Um, uh, the deck would extend six feet into the rear setback and the majority of the structure would exceed a height of four feet with the tallest part rising seven feet above the ground. Section 10.24 of the ordinance requires a minimum rear setback of 30 feet, which for this lot is measured from the ordinary high water mark. Um, and then we have a section 10.22 parentheses F that states that the deck, a deck greater than four feet above ground level is considered part of the structure and must adhere to the minimum rear setback of 30 feet. An existing set of non-compliant stairs are currently on the site. So that's what was included in the hearing notice. And so her application is for a variance to allow uh, the deck which, and staircase, which needs to be modified to adhere to building code standards, uh, to allow that to be permitted as an encroachment into the rear setback. Uh, Mark, this, sure. uh, the design we're talking about now, is this the one that's reflected in her new uh, uh, picture she sent us? Um, so, or the old sent, one? What was sent this after? So, there's a photo showing the existing deck. Um, yep. I think it was somewhere in your materials. The existing staircase, let's just call it. That's staircase. existing. Yep, right. that's existing. And okay. the reason, uh, so she built that, uh, it didn't have a landing at the top as required by building code. 
So before taking occupancy, the, uh, before issuing an occupancy permit, the building inspector flagged that as part of the issuance of the, perm of the occupancy and required that there be a, this, this barrier at the top to prevent its use because it didn't comply with building code uh, regulations. So um, then if you can go to the next picture, Daphne. By the way, Daphne Shu, we didn't introduce um, Dave. She is uh, the associate planner and she is, is is driving the uh, slides tonight so she's uh <laughs> she's my colleague and she joined the city uh, about a year ago so. very good thank you yep and she's quiet so you haven't heard from her <laughs> hi daphne so. hi everyone there you go. <laughs> hi there sorry we i forgot to introduce you daphne so so what you see here before you on the screen is something that the applicant provided uh, this afternoon, um, and it shows uh, an attempt to minimize the encroachment into the rear setback. It provides the landing at the top, uh, this, a few steps going down, and then obviously it, it turns back. And, and so it minimizes the, uh, this is the maximum way to minimize the encroachment into the rear setback. And I'll let her speak to that, but that's, okay. that's essentially the variance request right here. Um, I, did, I will report that I did a, a site inspection um, in April, I think it was late April, and um, saw the deck that you saw, the uh, staircase that you saw, staircase deck, um, and um, did talk to the applicant at the time and advised of the need for the variance. Um, at this point, uh, Mr. Chair, it's appropriate to turn it over to the applicant. Thanks, Mark. Um... So who, who do we have here to speak on behalf of 2501? Yep, hello, my name is Michelle Bond and I am the homeowner and the builder. The gen I acted as the general contractor, as the owner um, for building our new home at 2501 Middleton Beach Road. So I did come before uh, the variance board um, one other time, actually two other times, but one other time regarding the house and that was around September 2019. And at that time, um, I was told that this was the, the setback that I could do. Um, we, the board thought that the, the, the zoning went with the land. So the old home was 27 foot off the ordinary high water mark for the majority of the home. And then it dove back the three feet to get us back to the 30 foot off the ordinary high water mark. And that section is where the sliding glass door is. And that was um, on the plans at the time when we shared um, it back in September. So um, we built the home. And um, as Mark mentioned, um, the home has stairs, but it doesn't have the landing due to the number of treads that there are. So we need to get a, a landing and then use stairs basically um, to get to the water, which is why we built on this particular site to get to um, Lake Mendota. Um, I did submit my plans. Um, Daphne, do you mind showing, um, going through the slides that I sent, the issues that yeah, the was most, could you go to that with the issues with the stairs off the back of the house? And then I can kind of go through those slides. Yep, so go to the first page if you want. The first mind. page? Yes, please, thank you. Right there, perfect, yep. So that is showing what the current stairs look like. And you can see that there's a rail across because uh, the building permit said that I needed to do that because it weren't code compliant for building. And then at the same time of that, um, I was told in terms of zoning that going into the rear setback with these stairs um, was not allowed. So I needed to apply for this variance. Um, if we go to the next slide, that shows the, um, what the configuration could look like. So building permit says that I need to have a 36 inch or 36 inch three foot wide stairs is the minimum. So I'm trying to design um, new stairs that are, will have the least intrusion into the lake setback. And then if we go to the third slide, um, my neighbors to the right and left that's Marilyn and um, Catherine, and um, they have said that they could live with um, this, those stairs as we suggested. Um, 
So those are their signatures on those that page, that slide. And then if you turn to the next slide, we have two neighbors um, that are then to the south of us, um, Dan and Terry Fess and um, Emily and Sam um, are the house farther away. And those are the whole families or the homes that can see the said stairs as we are proposing. And they've all so that it sounds reasonable and they signed off on these um, as you can see from those slides and then as the process um, continues um, with doing a variance it says the review of alternate alternatives um, so the the possibility is we have no stairs um, to get to the lake which would be pretty sad and a hardship and um, Trying to remodel the home to be able to put stairs internally on there, that would take a big chunk out of the house. And um, when I submitted for the permit, the building permit, I had to do wind shears and things like that and structural things. So I, um, when I've talked to several engineers and a couple of different CAD people, um, they thought that they don't think that it's even possible, even if I spent sixty or $100,000 to kind of break into the existing home to be able to get internal stairs. Um, and then the next page kind of shows the next slide shows what the current inside of the home looks like. Um, the slide on the left is the first floor and then the slide on the right is the basement floor, the basement level. And then if we go to um, the next slide <coughs> The, imp the imposition of the hardship. Um, so when I submit the plans, I have to submit them through zoning and through the building permit. And um, I submitted back in October 22nd, 2019, and then again on November 5th. So the reason that I had to submit the plans twice is because originally we were just going to do a crawl. So we were going to do just a crawl down there. And then I thought, well, we're going to have stairs everywhere, no matter what. So why not just add two more feet above ground so then we could have a full basement. So that's why I had to um, apply the two times. So this was um, before the zoning and the building permit two times. Um, and I, I take um, great pride in what I do. And it's a, it's a big undertaking, but it's something that I very much enjoy. And um, I'm more than willing to do whatever we need to do to, to correct this. Um, but I did go in with the intention of showing on my plans. Um, so on the, um, the site plan, the overhead that I submitted, the rear steps were not on that, but they were on every other plan, except for um, when I look on my elevation for the, um, so when you, as many of you know, when you submit your plans, you do overhead plans for the first floor, second floor and basement, and then you do different elevations for the front, the rear and the left and the right. So on the right elevation, the stairs were not noted on there, um, but they were noted everywhere else. Um, so there were stairs on the plans. And then um, the last slide, the imposition of hardship, um, it's kind of hard um, having this flagged now that the home is done. Um, if it was flagged when I had the foundation or before I got the plans drawn up or I started construction, um, it would have been more feasible for me to fix the things that, um, or to make the changes so that we were within the setbacks. Um, so, yeah. And then, um, and then if you look at the last slide, Daphne, please, there's the picture. And that just kind of shows um, the view from the steps to show the homes. So uh, where that white is, that's like a little sailboat, that's Marilyn's house. And she understands um, and agrees with what we're proposing. And then the home next to that with all the windows, um, that's the fast home. And then the farthest house that you can see that's Emily and Sam's home. And so those are um, the four different families that we showed what we're proposing and they thought it was acceptable what we were proposing. So we've tried to talk to the neighbors and 
be mindful of what their concerns and considerations are and that such things. So I guess that's all I have to share right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Mark, is there any other staff reporting or correspondence that you've received? Um, I have not received any correspondence from the public. I did receive an inquiry today, but I asked him if he needed, if he was leaving a statement of any kind. He said no, so that's there's no report there for the public record. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you know, go go ahead. Well, and I just wanted to note that. Uh, I added to the packet uh, some uh, additional materials uh, which you received yesterday uh, regarding the um, my thought process uh, in April for and my rationale for why I determined that this needed to be um, granted a zoning variance. Um, okay. And so that's included in the packet um, as well as uh, previous materials from last uh, September. The the uh, Variance hearing and, and the packet uh, and, and the building plan that she uh, for which she got the for which Ms. Vaughn got the uh, zoning from plan. the 12th, correct? Okay. Well, that's well the packet, the uh, the minutes of the zo the previous zoning variance that she mentioned, um, where there is actually not a variance granted because she decided to uh, mm -hmm. alter the uh, plans um, to comply with existing existing variance that had been granted. Um, so I, I provided those minutes and then also provided you with the um, uh, packet that was part of the building permit and zoning permit application in late September. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure though what the um, plans that were submitted on October 22nd, uh, Michelle, you just mentioned, I wasn't aware that there were plans submitted on that day. So that just for my notes, I'm trying to understand what, what you're referring to there. Michelle. Yeah, so um, yes, so I have, um, I requested from Jim, who's the current building inspector, to give me a copy of the permit as I, and if Daphne scrolls down, um, you can keep scrolling down if you're seeing that. Yep, Daphne, that's great. And so you can see um, on those overheads, you can see the stairs for the overhead there. And so that's what I originally submitted. And then again, when I um, changed it to a basement, I then had to go through and um, add the basement and add the, the changes to the plans. So that wasn't, that wasn't submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Mark. That was submitted um, to Daphne the forward, Daphne forwarded it to um, the then, I think it was Bill, who was acting as the building inspector who was issuing mm -hmm. the permits. Yeah, so that wasn't zoning board that, that got that. Correct. Changed. Yeah, none of right. none of that was reviewed by zoning board because <clears throat> uh, we determined that that was, uh, uh, you know, based on the site plan review and the elevations. Um, we, you know, that I mean, I can't speak for Daphne, but she, I support her decision to grant the grant the permit, the zoning permit, based on the materials that were submitted last September. Yeah. Before we go too much further, I want to provide an opportunity. Before we start asking more in-depth questions, are there any any other neighbors or members of the public who wish to speak about this uh, particular variance? Sure, I can speak. I'm Rick Lemon. I'm about four or five doors to the north. Uh, I think her proposed plans for the tight staircase are very reasonable, and they look good and they serve the purpose. Um, Rick, would you, for the record, we need your address too. Okay, 2519 Middleton Beach Road. Thank you. Hi, this is Emily Kuhn and my husband, Sam Murkowski. Uh, we're at 2425 Middleton Beach Road and I concur with uh, Mr. Lemon. So does Sam. Yes, me too. We support the, the, the staircase as presented. Uh, Sam, what is your last name, please? Rakowski, it's spelled R as in Robert, A as in Adam, J as in John, K-O-W-S-K-I. Okay. I'm sorry, R-A-K. R-A-J as in John. Oh, R-A-J, okay. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep, no problem. And, and your address, Sam, please? Same as I, Emily's 2425 Middle Same one. Oh, okay, yep. all right, thank you.
I don't know if there's anyone else. There are some people present, but we have another variance hearing as well. So, okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this application? Okay. Uh, then does uh, the board have any any other uh, follow up questions for Michelle or Mark? Mark, is there um, as far as this the left or the it would be south um, side setback? Where are they at with that at this point? Um, so and the reason I ask, I was wondering if if the stair were to wrap around the south side of that house, would that would that then require? Oh, I see your a, point. I see your point. Probably um, a big side yard setback. Yeah, they. they I'm, I'm assuming it is, but I just wanted to ask the question. Yeah, they built pretty close to the their setbacks. Um, thanks, Daphne. Um, four foot eight is the set required, right? On the side uh, yard. Four, so for, uh, Mark, do you want me to turn? Turn? Go ahead. So, um, so we have 47 foot in the width. So normally it is that four foot eight. But for this, um, we had to go, I think it was five foot 10, if I'm recalling. Mm. Um, that was what, since we had that extra seven foot, um, we had to um, have a little bit more. And I think we did five foot 11 is what's drawn on the, the survey or the site plan. So we, you know, we, were, we have an inch mm. wiggle room kind of thing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So a 40 foot setback is normally, um, and we're getting a message here, which is unusual. <laughs> oh, that's somebody, it's, doing, it's a chat, I guess. Why don't we- uh, Support of the application. Yeah, let me just, uh, this is the first for me. Okay, so we can accept that. It's like a written statement. Um, okay. I'll, I'll just read it. It's Paul DiMusto, 2603 Middleton Beach Road and supports the application as well. So, um, <laughs> and that's a first for me to get public comment via a chat. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's perfectly <laughs> acceptable. So, uh, I just didn't want to miss it for later. Okay. Um, I guess it's like a registration for a meeting. Um, let me get out of that. So uh, the setback, we're talking about setbacks. So yeah, the 47, so having a 47 foot by lot is seven feet times two inches is 14, wait, seven feet times, no, yeah, it's 13 feet, I'm sorry, 40, so she's 13 feet off the um, minimum of 60 feet, 13 times two is 26 inches, which would be five feet, 10 inches. Yeah, so she's, so the setback inch. is five feet, 10 inches, yep. Okay, but no room to wrap this here, it doesn't look like, so. But no, because, yeah, that's correct. Yep. We have another registrant. Right. Uh, Diane. Um, we need her last name. I, yeah, Diane, uh, 24, 29. Uh, um, okay, Diane, can you type your last name, please, for the record? <clears throat> Otherwise, I can look. Oh, oh, I see. So it's oh, okay. Marilyn. Yes. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Michelle, I have a question for you. Um, you know, I'm going back to the, when you were back in September, September 12th, 2019, you know, we discussed your, your plan. And at that time, there was somewhat of an encroachment into the easement, if I remember correctly, on the Lake Mendota side. And you then notched the building to accommodate that setback. But then uh, at that point in time, we had taken a look at the, at the plans, uh, the site plan, and there was no indication that there was going to be a stair or doors for that matter on the lakeside. Um, and then- um, um, Daphne, oh. are you able to pull up the application at that time um, from that meeting? Are you able to pull up what would have been submitted at that time? Uh, no, I don't have it right now. 
I can look for it late and pull it up a little later. I can probably, oh, okay, she wants to do that. That's fine. Otherwise, I can um, find it pretty quickly because I'm in that folder. I'm just trying to get some historical background because we saw you in 2019. And now when I'm looking at there that packet was. of information, those plans do vary from what was submitted uh, for your building permit. So there, and my recollection is, and, and Daphne or Mark can pull it up if possible, um, is there always was a slider there because we always wanted, you know, a point of access from the lake to the lakeside. So um, we had, hopefully this will pull up, but um, yeah, we always had a slider there. Oh, oh yeah, I, I, I see that, yeah. Slider. I do see the slider in the plan, I'm sorry. But you know, on the site plan and even on the building plans, there was no indication there were stairs. Um, on the site plan, you are correct. My CAD person did not do that. And I, you know, we did not talk about it. Daphne and I had talked about a lot about the front stairs being out of the setback. And mm -hmm. um, you know, we, had the, we had the plans, as I said, the overhead for the different floor plans and the elevations. Now, like I said, the one elevation from the side did not have the stairs, but all of the other floor plans for the first and second and had I, the I, overhead with the stairs. Daphne, I found it if you want, unless, oh, you're basically there. Okay, never mind. we'll just go with you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for pulling that up. Right, that's the home you uh, removed. So that was the site plan there. Yep. Or no, that's the. There you go. Yep, there, there's the, the building plan with the slider. Yep. Oh, I see. And so can you go to the site plan above it too, please, Daphne? So again, this is from the September 12th um, meeting. So I think this was, yeah, this is the proposed footprint, not going into the. So uh, the east, the bottom is the east. Okay, there we go. And at the time, the zoning board uh, didn't support and, and, and with, through discussion with the applicant uh, uh, said, well, only a part of that, like two thirds, the, the right two thirds, if you will, uh, where it says, uh, Dur and mm -hmm. line, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, that part was allowed to encroach into the rear setback based on a variance granted in the 90s for the previous structure. And since variance yep. is run with the land, uh, that was retained. Uh, and then the part that says uh, MEA, you know, that part there, thank you, Daphne. Uh, that you asked her to modify, you asked, uh, or you advised Michelle to uh, modify the plan so that it wouldn't encroach. And that's why her. Um, plan now is a, a staggered, uh, you know, it has a step in it, if, or in a, you know what I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not a flush facade. Yep. So. And then, Daphne, can you go back to slide number seven, two of the slides when you get a chance? But this is what, this is why the Zoning Board of Appeals didn't see a set of steps, uh, because the plan that we looked at in September uh, did not have them. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The only time you added steps, Michelle, was after you, you set the house back in order to get out of the, the uh, rear yard setback. Well, I, I, if, you look, if you look at this, the slide that Daphne just pulled up, thank you, Daphne. Um, mm -hmm. You can see that there were steps on the rear elevation. Um, so there were steps when we were just five foot out of the ground, and then there were still the same steps that went up two feet when we added the basement. Right, but Michelle, this is a plan, this is an elevation showing the setback of the house that was not on the plan that we first met with in September. Daphne, are you able to, to, to pull up the whole packet of what they would have saw in September to what I submitted? In September, the rear of the house went straight across. Yes, it yes. did not jog. Okay, right, Mark. Well, that's all the Zoning Board of Appeals ever saw. Right, yeah. and I, I don't recall yeah. seeing, a, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Michelle. Um, I can hear that the back of the house was straight, yep, so that we were 27 foot off the ordinary right. high water for the whole width of the house. Right. But there would have been um, the plans, I, I, I believe I showed, because 
I'm trying to think, I think it was Mark, um, it made the suggestion of we just jog in that area and there was the drawing of a slider door on there. So we knew that the slider was the area that was gonna jog back in. It was a window though, not a patio door. It's always been a patio door. So when you originally brought the plan in September, Oh, I yep. see. That's, see, that's not a, oh, it's a patio door. It says patio door. It's a yeah, patio. It could be a ground level. Right. Well, we're yeah. still going to be, um, you know, five foot off the ground because, um, you know, the ordinary, the high water mark is so, um, the water, mm -hmm. the ground level is so high, we, we had to pull the building up out mm -hmm. of the ground. Regardless. In, in this packet, Daphne, are there any elevations or any other information that would have indicated stairs? Um, yeah, I didn't recall any. No, I don't think so. Sure, that wasn't picture window? No, and can, you can see with that, Daphne, if you go back to the one with the rear deck of the old house, they had quite a substantial. So that's where our house is. You see where their structure, the old structure was? Mm -hmm. And then they had a huge, the previous owner, Mr. Anderson, had a huge deck with a nice big size bench and, um, and things. Um, so that kind of shows you what was there prior to us. There was a substantial deck with um, a bench on the side. If you go to the site plan or the original survey map, um, that showed that deck that Michelle was describing. If you go up a little bit. That, that original deck wasn't four feet off the ground, correct? Okay. The bench would have been around, around that, um, which was on the um, south side of the deck. There was not a bench around the whole entire deck, just on the south side, kind of around the area that we're wanting the stairs to be. Let me recap the way I see it. The plan was brought in, it was straight across. We didn't know whether it was a patio door or not. It didn't have a stairs drawn on the rear elevation. We told you to go ahead and, and do a setback so you'd be out of the uh, setback area in the part that wasn't grandfathered. That was fine. You did that. When you did that, you submitted that revised plan to the building department, not to zoning. The building department then said, okay, um, you're going to have to change the way you, you walk out of the stairs because those stairs on that landing were never on the original zoning plan. Then then you added two feet to the height of the building. Mark, is there a problem with that, by the way? Uh, when we, as a Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, agreed to okay the plan, it was two feet shorter. Was there way. anything, sorry, I missed the last, the last meeting that this came up. Was there actually a motion that, that passed that we granted something at that moment, or, or did she take it back and rearrange the house so that there was no variance needed. That's correct. We we told right. her if she jogged yep. the house, she wouldn't require a variance. Right. So she right. went back and had the plans redone and then so, submitted them for a building permit. So, so we to me, that. that's two that's two separate issues, Mark. I don't exactly that since we didn't really issue anything um, last time, I don't know that we can then go back to that last time that she came to the to the board um, and say it wasn't here then. Because we weren't looking at that at that point, right? Yeah, what was before you last time, uh, I don't have, I can see if I can find that hearing notice, but I'm sure it was just the, uh, uh, well, let me find the hearing notice so I can speak with facts. Actually, she, oh yeah, that's right, it's in the packet. Oh, I see your point though, your point is, is well taken. Well, maybe it's and now it's in the hands of the building inspection because right. it no longer required a variance. I got and therefore, it. Correct. wasn't a, a determination that we right. had to be. Okay, concerned. you're about to see it. On the, it's correct. scroll down a couple pages, Daphne. No, this is just on on base. But then when I look at the at what was submitted for the building permit application, looked at the site plan, there was still oh. no indication of stairs on there. So in that location. So the motion, I'm sorry, I was confusing what was on the screen versus what I have on my screen. So I have it up in my screen now. So the uh, variance request back in, in September was um, constructing a new two-story re re two residence. The structure would be set back four feet 11 
inches from the left side lot line. So that's that wasn't that's not before that's not germane. Um, right side lot lot line, and that's not germane. And then 27 feet three inches from the east lot line. Um, so yeah, so it had to do with the flush nature of it, and I think uh, what the applicants proposed at the time was that they were going to comply with the side setback, but they still were requesting the rear setback. But then during discussion with with the board, uh, the jog idea came up, and and so there was no no need to grant a variance based on what was submitted. Correct. So I think it's two separate variances in my mind that that really don't have anything to do with one another. There was a variance back then. She decided to rearrange it to not require one. At that time, there was no stairs shown, so there was no need to grant a variance then. Now she's coming back with a new variance requesting a stair. Now the, now the question to me becomes, so this was submitted to the building inspector, and at that point, it wasn't caught, right, essentially. At that point, it probably should have been caught that this deck was pushed over the, the rear setback line. But to Mark's or to Paul's point, it was it was showing up on the on the elevations, but it's really the site plan that would reference the setback at. And if it's not shown on there, correct, it's mm -hmm. it's difficult to say you should have caught that, right? It's a discrepancy in the drawings, essentially. Okay, so I guess we just have to concentrate on on whether. The, the building's so, in fine shape, as far as we're concerned, as far as the building inspection department is concerned, except for the stairs. Yep. So we have to, I guess, just zero in on the stairs. Mm -hmm. So look, can we review, just so you, so this idea of what was in the zoning, uh, in the plan set last fall. Um, so what you're looking at is uh, one of the elevation drawings, which if you can scroll, uh, there you go, Daphne, thank you. So this shows the right elevation, and that's the front staircase, so facing the road. And mm -hmm. then to the right, or the bottom, excuse me, um, is the, uh, yeah, so there you can see the jog with the narrow windows. That's the part yeah. that sticks out a little bit. And then there's mm -hmm. no staircase there, as mm -hmm. Michelle mentioned in her statement. Right. Uh, however, if you go to the other elevation drawing, it sounds like there was a staircase, which looks like a ladder, because you're looking yep. straight at it. So, um, you know, so that's that's shown there on the on the east elevation, uh, but the site plan also did not indicate. I, well, I I don't know. Well, let's see what the site plan. And Daphne, can you scroll back up to the south elevation of that, please? There it is. So that's the south, and then if you go to the north. The north elevation, it doesn't show up there either. No. No. Okay. Because those two elevations, along with the site and the plan, are really the only two indications of that you get the depth of what that stair would be. Like you said, Mark, the the um, east elevation, all you see is a ladder. So that's and that's really right. that's really a moot point because. There, it wouldn't be the first house that had a patio door that had, that had a, uh, a bar across it, so you can't go out of it. Okay, so building inspection. You know, we're not we're not trying to place blame or anything. We're just trying to say, are, can she now build this way to get out? So as far Fair as enough. I'm concerned, uh, you know, it's not a solid. Well, are we, did we close the uh, meeting? To, uh, no, we didn't. I was just thinking. I was just thinking about that. Um, is there any other responses from zoning? Um, well, I just think if you can go to the site plan, which is where Daphne was heading, I think it would be good because Daphne reviewed this, and if she wishes to comment, uh, Daphne, feel free. Um, but I've reviewed. Uh, I reviewed this a month and a half ago, so I have to look at it again now. Um, we all have to turn. Is there a way to rotate that? Um, probably not. Thank you. Um, so this is probably, well, 
maybe Daphne, if you want to explain, since you did the ultimately did the review at the end, um, this is what you reviewed, right? Right. Yeah. So I I reviewed this plan, um, and there is also one the one that came after it too, the one that Michelle referred to, um, and I guess in so. This was the site plan that I looked at. I didn't really look at the other floor plans um, because that's more what building inspection does. And so I didn't see the stairs. Um, and then the stairs were also in the, the previous plan that she had also um, gotten approved. Um, but when she said she was adding a basement, I, guess I just assumed that she would be digging deeper um, and not building, you know, bringing the whole um, house up another two feet just going down further two feet. Um, and so that's why I felt there wasn't really a need for it to go through zoning all over again. Um, and so it was also my mistake of just um, not realizing that the whole building was also going up and therefore stairs were also gonna go up um, and all of that as well. But, but I, I, the point, I'm sorry, the point I was trying to make ahead. with that, the site plan, um, here, I mean, I can understand why Daphne didn't see the, uh, um, you know, I, I can understand why she didn't see the setback because it's labeled as 30 feet, six inches. And, and then on the front door on the site plan, it's labeled as stooped. You can see that right above in the middle there. If you go to the front door, it's labeled as stooped. Mm -hmm. So the front door, front steps were labeled on the site plan, but the rear wasn't. Right. So I am not, um, when I when I have drawn these new stairs with the landings and such, I'm not using the same CAD person that I used. Um, we should, you know, he should have labeled it. And um, I did go in to talk to Daphne a couple times about things. And um, I, I feel like um, we knew that I was raising the house and um, there's going to be stairs everywhere. I mean, there's stairs in the going from the house to the garage and the garage to the house and from in and out of the house. And um, it's just kind of a house with stairs. <laughs> uh, well, does anybody you know, else from the board have any direct questions of Michelle? Yeah, I, you know, this is Mark Wolford, Michelle. And I met you at on site there a little while back. <laughs> Yeah, I guess one, one, of the, one of the questions I had was the, the proposed step, steps that you have go in front of that casement window in your lower level. Yes. And whether that is a, uh, is that a bedroom and then therefore that's in a uh, required egress window, which cannot it be opened is, at this point? It is not um, an egress window. It is um, kind of, we have like a TV area down there. Okay. So it, it's, it's a casement window. I'm more than happy to not use that window um so i'm just trying to um just trying to solve it with the least impact um so there is a there is a casement um uh you know a window that would open but we don't need to open that as long as it's not yeah. an egress window that's what i'm getting yeah it's okay. not an right. egress window no as you can see in that thank you daphne you're so good um if you can see in the bottom right slide over there that's the window yeah. that's near a couch okay are there uh, other questions of michelle then um at this time i'd like to close the the hearing and give us an opportunity to discuss as a board close it to the public uh, well, I'm, we're just going to close the hearing and then move it uh, to board discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just following the new uh, the zoning handbook. Yeah. What, what he's doing is he's closing the public hearing where there's, public in, where there's input from the applicant and other residents in the area. Right. And now it remains a public meeting, of course, and now it's up to deliberation for the body. That's all. Right. He's, that's what he's saying. All right, my architect, fellow architects on the board. How many how many steps can you have coming out of a patio door before you have to hit a landing? City of Middleton, I think, says you can have two risers, which is one step, but mm -hmm. then you have to have a at least a three foot landing. Is anyone familiar with that code? I'm not familiar with the residential. Okay. The as idea much. is correct, though. This is Bob Mangus. <clears throat> I think that all of the plans that were probably looked at 
previously where stairs were shown, none of them really had a code complying landing outside of the door before you started to reverse down the stairs. So right. that was mm -hmm. in error in all of the drawings that were ever submitted. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty much an open, an open structure. Um, the neighbors have no problem with it. Um, and to me, it's no different than if you, for instance, uh, had a rack and put uh, three kayaks out in front of the house or behind the house there as far as blocking, blocking the view for a neighbor. So I don't see it as a problem. Um, I don't know, any other thoughts? Well, I think in what we uh, uh, reviewed back in September, even if she were five feet above grade, she still would have uh, needed those stairs because when stairs are attached to the house above four feet, it's structure, correct, Mark? Part of the structure, yes. Consider so she still would have needed a, a, a variance at that point right. in time. I guess part of my a little bit of the heartburn I have is the inconsistency in the drawings. You know, going through what we had seen in September, then to what was submitted, and then even then it, there was a um, little indication there were stairs in that setback. Are there any precedents in that area, Mark, for stairs encroaching in setbacks? Um, yes, uh, she showed. Uh, uh, the bond, um, um, I'm sorry, Michelle Bond showed a um, two property, so not the property immediately to the south, but the second one uh, and the third one, especially the third one to the south. Yeah, had a deck and the stairs going way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was, uh, that was yeah. way over. Yeah. yeah, and those are probably older homes. Uh, I, you know, I couldn't right find there. because, yeah, because Michelle did ask about this. So I looked in those zoning permits, uh, as a, looked in those folders and I couldn't see any approvals and we don't, granted for those structures, uh, specifically no permits. We keep permits, but we don't keep plans. Um, okay. So after seven years, we used to dispose of plans. So it's very possible, um, especially with the house three units down, um, it's possible that that was, you know, I, I think that's an older home and it's possible that it preexisted or maybe it was uh, a, maybe a previous owner added, you know, I, I don't know what happened with those properties in other words, uh, but each case is supposed to stand on its own merits and obviously get the permits that are required and, and the, uh, comply with the zoning that's in place at the time of construction. So. You know, we can't refer this back to the September meeting. This is a totally different situation. She, she did everything we 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 gave her the we gave her the okay at the September meeting to change the plan, which she did, and now it became into the hands of the building inspection department. So now we're treating a separate issue, basically, which is the stairs. So, you know, once again, right. in my opinion, uh, there's history on this lake here of things like this happening. It's not a solid structure. It's not blocking anyone's view. The neighbors don't have a problem with it. So. That's that's my take on it. And I, I agree. I agree with you, Mark. Um, uh, my my sense is exactly the same as yours. I don't see what there really is an issue over. I mean, uh, where the water is, there's there are plenty. It, I think we need to bend over backwards to accommodate people that are trying to do something that's you know for the good of the public. My take is, I, I think, you know, ideally this would have been caught when it was submitted um, to the building inspector and it, and it wasn't. Um, I think the intent, although it wasn't always clearly demonstrated, um, was to have a sliding door and a stair. Um, mm -hmm. And I think they're going to the effort to make that um, intrusion into the cell setback as minimal as as possible um, according to code so um, to me it's it's kind of an unfortunate miss but i 
I'd hate to punish someone that just built a brand new house on the lake and isn't allowed to have ac or you know back rear access to it. I agree. And you know, quite honestly, if they drop the level of the lake one of these days, like they're talking about doing, the ordinary high water mark may be ten feet off further, and then she won't even be in the in the setback. Right. Who knows? I guess my advice to Michelle, though, is as a builder contractor, you should know this kind of stuff. Uh, whoever was building your house should have known that a, that a stairs can't go in a setback if it's over four feet off grade. So there's a little slap on the wrist, but I, I'm okay with it. Are I move, there? We take a vote. We got to have a motion first. Yeah, okay, we got to have a. Uh, well, do we need to discuss go over the the hardship? I think the hardship is the existing condition and the set of circumstances that led to the existing condition. And that's significant. What was uh, her, what did she list as her? An additional point. Well, that, you know, you know, reading, okay, she was notified that it was non-compliant when the inspector came through. I the, the original, I'm sorry to interrupt, the original application has um, uh, the original hardship statement. You might want to look at that too. I'm just kind of, I just want to review is that there isn't anything that's self-imposed because self-imposed isn't anything that we can consider as a hardship, so. So are we going to consider these statement of hardships? Uh, okay. All right, then. Um, I guess another hardship would be the fact that, that the owner was under the impression from the building inspection department that everything was okay. That's a good and then, point. And then after after the CO is is issued, they say it's not okay. Oh, so, right. When she got the initial building permit, yeah. you're saying. So maybe, okay. you know, if it had been caught early when it should have been in the beginning, she could have done something different. Mm. Well, I make a I can make a motion. Yeah, let's let's have a motion. I'll make a motion that we grant the variance to to build the Non-conforming staircase out the uh, out of the rear of the house, facing the lake. Okay. Hardships are as we talk. Mark, do you have enough down for hardships? Mark uh, Opitz. I'm I'm here. I just had to unmute myself, and I'm thinking about how to answer your question. Um, I've been taking notes, obviously, and we have it recorded so I can go back, but oh, okay. basically what I'm hearing you say, uh, Mark, is um, the owner was under the, well, you said the owner was under the impression that everything was okay, and so they were work, uh, working in good faith. You didn't say that, but that's essentially what you're saying, right? Correct. Um, and uh, the violation was not pointed out until after the was it after this certificate of occupancy I at the time of was. occupancy is when it became mm -hmm. yeah, after the yeah. house was built so the build a building permit was issued um, probably in october well, no it, right, it was, was issued in. with the condition of the certificate of, or the building permit was issued in right around october 1st i don't know what day yeah. exactly yeah. and uh, zoning sign off was late september and then uh the certificate of occupancy was mid-April, uh, April 20th or something, something around there. Um, so in terms of the hardship, the, uh, you know, you've got this statement here, I guess I would appreciate for the minutes if you could call out exactly what, what in the statement you're serving, you're, you're citing as the basis. So, um, cause I'm looking at Mark, you'd said, you asked about the steps on, out of the patio door. Oh no, that was a question you asked. 
Um, yeah, I guess I could use a little help with for the minutes on what you mean by what, what the hardship is. So are you talking, well, essentially the circumstances is what I have right now, that this existing condition and set of circumstances that led to this condition is what I heard mm -hmm. you saying, that's what I wrote down. And then Paul, you mentioned there's nothing that's self-imposed because that can't be, or you want to ensure there's nothing that's self -imposed. would be very, right. That's, yeah. Uh, and then Mark, you said the owner was under the impression from the building inspector that everything was okay, uh, with in good faith. Uh, so that's what I've documented so far. Yeah, that's, that's good. So the motion is to grant the variance to allow, um, the staircase as presented tonight, essentially, is that what you're saying to, uh, well, correct. uh, no, uh, her, yeah, her revised one, right? Yeah. Um, because that appears to meet uh, the building code, which was part of the problem and why it was flagged. Okay. Right. But I think, you know, they aren't going to be able to have a, I, I, what's, okay. Yeah, we're fine. They'll need some more supports under that landing because there's no ledger board up against the house. Well, that's a, yeah, that, that's obviously not a zoning issue. So, um, so basically what you're granting is those are three feet wide, it looks like. So it comes out six feet. Is that what I'm yes. seeing? Three plus three. Three and three. Yep. Three and uh, three. But it's actually it encroaching, what, four feet? No, it's, that's, that's all encroaching. The three plus three is all an encroachment. Well, the setback is, the set, yeah, well, the so setback is 30 feet. Okay. Oh, oh, so yeah. it's a six foot encroaching. It's, it's a six yeah. foot encroachment. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, can, can you guys correct me if I'm wrong? The, the three feet, is that, measure, should that be measured inside of the railing? Right now it's including the railing. Well, in a staircase, you can have a handrail that uh, invades the, Minimum a handrail, but a handrail, but this is a guardrail. Guard yeah. So I, I, just don't I believe, I believe you can. Okay. This is this is just looks like a little wrought iron, a little skinny yeah. half inch. Yeah. The hearing notice was written for the deck uh and staircase would extend six feet into the rear setback area. Yeah. That's how it was written. So yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, so Mark made uh, a motion to approve. And is there a second? I second it. Who is that? John. Okay, thank John. you. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any nays? Okay, the motion carries to approve that stair variance as, as Mark is, uh, will be indicating in his minutes all right and then do we Thanks. have any other action from mark I, I don't i don't think so correct okay then um nope. moving on to our next agenda item um mark would you like to review the application sure um so this is the applicant is uh, paul haviland who I believe, it, oh, there he is, he's present, um, of 2413 Middleton Beach Road. He's requesting variances from the minimum side, uh, maximum lot coverage and maximum height for the detached garage. Um, the applicant's requesting approval to replace the existing single level 24 by 24 garage with a 21 foot tall, 26 by 29 detached garage at a setback eight inches or two feet, eight inches to the foundation from the left side lot line. The lot coverage with the new structure would be 43 and a half percent, including eight and a half percent for an existing patio. Uh, and then I cite the sections there that limit a lot coverage to 31%, um, require a minimum four foot, eight inch sides yard setback and a maximum height for a detached garage of 15 feet. Okay. Any other uh, staff reporting, Mark? Uh, no, and I did not receive any communications. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? That might not be. I should have double checked that. Well, go ahead. I might. Uh, 
I'm going to do a search in my emails because something rings a bell right now. So oh, I'm a little out, I'm a little out of order here. Uh, who uh, who is here uh, the applicant to speak on behalf of this application? Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Paul Havland, and uh, I am the applicant. Paul, would you like to go through and uh, just discuss your 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 application with us? Please, yes. Uh, so I have an existing garage that's approximately 24 by 24 um, in size. It already has the side yard encroachment, so I'm not trying to move the foundation any closer. Um, the it was I purchased this home in uh, August of last year, and it was the garage was either going to be torn down by the previous owner or try to be repaired to some extent. It is uh, in pretty bad shape. There's a lot of rot on the interior framing. Um, but that's, yeah, so that's the current condition. Um, and then the intent uh, is to add a second story to the garage, um, extend it really wide enough or a little bit extra deep to be able to allow for a staircase up to access the second, an interior staircase to access the second story, um, and then uh, widen it by two feet as well, but not uh, further the encroachment on the north lot line. And then also uh, at the same time, attempt, well not attempt, but bring up the um, character and the quality of the garage to be uh, similar to that of the home. So we'll be using uh, the same building materials. Uh, the garage will be um, smart siding uh, with cedar accents and uh, stone facade. Anything else you'd like to share with us? In regards to the hardships, um, so our home has a crawl space that is not adequate for any storage. Um, the crawl space varies from about 12 inches in dirt floor to about three feet uh, with some pea gravel. Uh, and there is, um, yeah, so it, it, it's through a scuttle hole is, uh, you know, unsuitable for storage. And so the intention, again, uh, the number, one of the hardships is for the storage. Uh, second hardship is to hopefully maintain uh, as much of the existing landscaping as possible. Um, there's some pretty cool trees that are, um, that are there that we're gonna try to keep uh, along my southern border, including a uh, Japanese maple that's giant for Japanese maples as, as those trees go. Um, and then, um, you know, also be able to maintain a, a larger width area to allow for future, um, vehicles if needed for any type of maintenance or construction to get back there as well along will be my uh, southern border. I have uh, discussed the project with the neighbors two to the north and two to the south. Um, everyone is, uh, has been in support of the project and then the neighbor immediately to the north and the neighbor immediately to the south. Uh, I believe both have provided um, written support uh, and Mark, I think um, the neighbor to the south sent you an email uh, today or yesterday. Yes, and I was going to mention that as part of the record. I, I did find that. So, Did you get the Steffens to sign a letter? Uh, yes. They, well, I don't know that it was signed um, yet. Uh, they were trying to make DocuSign work, and we were having some struggles with that. I forwarded, uh, Mark, some email correspondence that included the letter that they were planning to sign. Um, and I think, and I can make sure that he has it if he doesn't, a, um, a note from them saying that they're in support and they'd be happy to do anything they needed, but that they were um, relatively unavailable. So I'll find that. Okay. I'm confirming receipt of that message okay. from Dennis and Kate Steffen, 2417 Middleton Beach Road. And the other one is uh, John Fotenhauer. Um, I just had it on my screen and now it's gone. <laughs> I believe it's 2411 Middleton Beach Road. Yeah, 2411, thank you. Also in support.
one note uh, that I didn't know at the time of my application was that uh, the height is actually to the mid gable um, as opposed to the maximum height. So uh, in my uh, requested variance, as well as in my plans, you see that it's actually used the maximum height of the garage, which is going to be just shy of 21 uh, as opposed to the mid gable height. Now, again, we have a relatively low pitched um, hip roof, so it's not a significant mm -hmm. difference, um, but it would probably make a difference of about one and a half feet to two feet. Um, I'm just for the record. Are you so you're saying that you actually measured more conservatively? You, you measured to correct. the top. So I measured. Very, I'm sorry. I, I, correct. I measured to the top and I actually rounded up. But you only needed to measure to the midpoint. That is correct. So that's good. If, if it were the other way, we would have a problem. Okay. Mark, on a garage, don't you have to go to the peak? Midpoint of the highest. <coughs> That's the house. So what about a, what about building a, height is, uh, building height is defined in the zoning code. Uh, unrelated to whether it's what type of structure it is. It's a, um, oh, I have it right here. Well, look up detached garage. Oh, well, okay, I'll, I'll do that in a second. Let me first, well, okay, I'll start with that one. Um, while he's doing that, my name is Emily Kuhn. I live at 2425 Middleton Beach Road, and I fully support Paul's um, plans for the garage and, and uh, the other thing. Um, it's, it's, it's hard around here to get, you know, enough space, and uh, his garage does need some, some upgrades. His house is beautiful. Um, we are so happy that he and his family moved here. So if he needs to move forward to upgrade his lot, then I fully support that. Thanks, Emily. Thank you as well. Are there other uh, neighbors that wish to speak out? Sure, this is Rick Lemon, 2519 Middleton Beach Road. And I fully support the plan as drawn too. I think it's a good looking building. There are a lot of two story garages on our street. Storage is a huge problem here because most of us don't have basements uh, because of the high water table. And uh, I think what he's proposing is entirely reasonable and I would support it. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Does any, any of the board members have any other questions for Paul? Oh, there's another one that came up, Mark. Paul DeMusto. Okay, and you, uh, there might be other speakers too. So there's a registrant. Oh, Paul DeMusto, okay. Um, and ha it's handy to have all the Middleton Beach, having uh, two Middleton Beach Road properties on the same variance hearing with similar right. neighbors. Consolidated <laughs> everyone's time. You just copy them over. <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time. Right. Well, and I know Emily happens to like a lot of meetings, so <laughs> although she's gone now, she didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, did you get uh, Marilyn? I think uh, oh, that was oh, the so, that was prior. Yeah, and there's there are a couple. There's another person present. A couple other people present. Actually, a phone number too. So I don't know if anybody else wants to uh, speak. Is there anyone else on the uh, on the meeting that would wish to, wishes to speak? Katie, you had a comment? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, She's she said the garage height rule is burned into her brain. It's, so it's okay, just you remember, do you remember the um, garage on Park Street? Yes. It was to the middle of the gable, not the total height of the garage. Okay. Right. And so I'm actually about to read that, uh, Katie, that what is etched in your brain, I'm just gonna etch it further. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, it says, they must not be taller than the principal structure and in no case more than 15 feet in height. Now, I can see, uh, Mark, your comment about in no case more than 15 feet in height, doesn't that mean to the top? But height is defined in the, uh, in the back as um, under definitions under definitions building height 
measurement, a distance to be measured from the mean ground level immediately adjoining the front of the structure to the top of the cornice of a flat roof, which this isn't, a uh, mansard roof, uh, shed roof, uh, arch, or to the midpoint of the highest gable on a pitched or hip roof. So based on that definition, I applied with the, uh, the famous Park Street uh, uh, case, and then now this and others along the years um, to the midpoint of the highest gable of a detached garage is how, I, how we have interpreted that even since before I was here. Wow, I must be losing it. I thought in the past we took garages to the peak, total height. Mm -hmm. All right, I stand corrected. So we're not talking a height of 21, 21, 21 foot, it, no. whatever. So, all right. What is, is the it, new height? Uh, I didn't get that in my records. Uh, let me do a little call. math. Yeah. Somebody's gonna have to do the math in that picture. Oh, yeah. it's not, it's not uh, labeled. It's, yeah, um, it's not labeled there. I believe it's gonna be, um, well, again, I, I haven't met, there's a whole bunch of architects, so I'll defer to, <laughs> I believe it's 17 feet, 10 inches to um, my soffits, and then a total of 21 uh, foot, 5 inches, and 9 and 3, 30 seconds. Uh, yep. Average those numbers. Oh, good. There's like a bunch of people doing this calculation, so I don't have to worry. Four and about a half it. feet, roughly. Oh, you can't say roughly. Well, four, four and a half feet. For the peak, so you take half of that. Well, it looks like from like he mentioned from his soffit to his to his peak, four and a half feet. Right. So you got to take That's half of that. That'd be the Correct. midpoint. <laughs> right. So two. So foot you three. essentially sub subtract two feet, two, two and a quarter three. feet from the maximum, right? Yeah. So nineteen and a quarter. Is that right? Yes. I don't have a calculator. I think you guys all have your calculators and stuff. 19.2. Right. That's what I had. 19.2 and a half, probably. Whatever. Uh, we'll call it 19.3. It's, it's above the 15. 19.3. Okay. <laughs> Daphne, can you show the photograph of the front of the, of the existing garage with the neighboring garage next to it, the blue garage? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. She's really good at this. That's why she's doing this. Oh, yeah. Book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is Stefan's house. That's a house I designed. So that, <laughs> that well, garage. you an expert. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that garage, well, if that's a eight foot door, 16, 18, about to the peak. But because of the slope of the roof. Anyway, that's pretty massive, is what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. I don't, it in is. other words, the proposed new garage next door. Is not going to dwarf the neighbor. Well, it, it, we're getting a little bit into a discussion with the board. Do we have any other questions directly for Paul or the applicant? Can you point out where the Japanese tree is? Uh, so, if you're looking at the picture to the left of the front facade right of the garages, yeah, right there. It's so that one right there. Yeah. And I actually put a jog in the garage to help save that tree. So if you look at the um, first floor plan of the garage. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. So you won't cut the root system? That's the, uh, that's, that's the hole. Right. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. that's the hole. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions for Mark Opitz? Mark, this is also increasing the lot coverage, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. 43.5% and the old one was. I believe we're increasing the lot coverage by 147 square feet. 147 square feet. Okay. And Paul, you mentioned lack of storage is one of your hardships. Um, do that due to you don't have a basement. Do you have any attic space or any other 
crawl spaces that could be used for storage in your home? Uh, no, none. Uh, there is no attic um, of, edit, uh, of really any any kind. Um, it's a flat roof. Uh, and then the part that's not flat is kind of more cathedral ceiling, so a slope roof interior to the bedrooms. Yep. And no basement, you said too. Is that didn't you say that? Is, that is correct. There is no um, there is no basement. So in summary, uh, no, there is zero interior storage space. And then Daphne, could you show the floor plan again, just showing the overall dimensions of the garage itself? This one or the site plan above it? No, I think that's fine. So it's up. Oh, or go up a little more. Here we go. 26 by 29 is the, is the envelope. Mm -hmm. And then with the cutout, the, um, southeast corner yeah by no means is that a, a huge garage it's a two car yeah and the only reason yep. it's 29 deep is to get the stairs up that's correct right. yeah mm -hmm. okay and the existing garage is about ready to fall down correct that is correct which by the way i really wish it had because it would have it's insured <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are there other questions for uh, zoning or Paul? Any other residents? Uh, then I'd like to uh, close the hearing now and discuss as a board. Hey, Mark Opitz. Mark Wolford. Do we have a uh, sanitary sewer easement anywhere between the house and the garage? Uh, Probably. Can you pull uh, that up on the plan? I can't, the copy I made here doesn't oh wait, come out foot. dark enough well, to show it. I yeah, just want I mean, to make they, sure we're not invading the sewer, sanitary sewer easement with the new garage. I don't think that was shown on the drawing, but it looks to me like the applicant was, and I don't remember our discussion now, Paul, but I, I believe you were well aware of it. That's uh, correct. Um, if you don't mind, you can ask him quickly. May I? Go ahead. I'm, I'm asking you if you. If okay. You, so um, it, this, uh, the proposed garage does not uh, impede on the sewer setbacks uh, and the sewer easement. And we will not be um, as far east as the, um, as the Stephens house, which is to the north. Zoning should verify that, should they not? We will. It's actually our building inspector too. Um, but with the gap there of uh, 16, I think it is. I can't read the number right now. But I'm... Actually, I should look at my, oh yeah, it's 26, sorry. Yep, 26. Yeah, there's plenty of room there. So... Um, not worry about it. Okay. I'm glad you brought it up, Mark. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can we just review his uh, hardships again real quick? Well, I think I can give a little synopsis. The existing garage is crap. It's falling down. Don't put crap <laughs> in the report, Mark. Um, and there's a, a severe lack of, sh of storage in the house. I heard exactly. you say dilapidated, Mark. Dilapidated, that's what I said, yes. Well, I guess I should back up. Um, is there any other discussion? If not, does someone want to make a motion? So well, I'll make another. I made the last so one. Just someone want to make one? Just to just to recap, there's a, there's three things right that are being asked for a variance. There's a side setback, a height requirement, 
and is there one area. Is it in that area, the lot area, yeah, okay. So addressing the heights, there are plenty of other garages on that street that are as high, if not higher. Correct. I don't know that that's uh, well. The 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 character reason. of the neighborhood has been a, an issue that we've called into play before, especially downtown. Mm -hmm. But this is the same thing. These old these buildings here. So it's, it would be in character. I, I don't know that that's a hardship though, Mark. Like I agree with you that yeah. it it doesn't limit, you know, doing this. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't know that that you can, you can't really use an adjacent property as a hardship for this particular property. Well, everyone, everyone is entitled to have adequate storage for their personal effects. And if he has no basement and no other place to store and he has no attic, the only place to store anything is gonna be over the garage. Right. And I think that's a legitimate, I mean, I think we've used that in the past. Yes, we have. But yep. And there, Mark, Mark uh, Wolford's right there. There are a number of properties, I think, in this area where we have had these same projects come before us. Yeah, I wasn't using that as a, excusing a hardship. I was just gotcha, saying. Gotcha, gotcha. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I probably, right. yeah. So you're right to bring up the fact that there are three issues we are addressing. Mm -hmm. And so as far as the, the side setback, um, it's not encroaching any further than the current building. That's my understanding. So I know we've looked at that in the past as kind of a, a hardship, you know, to, to move something that's currently non-conforming um, into conforming. Yeah, agreed. And it, while it does look like there'd be room to shift it to the south, it would impede on existing vegetation. Yeah. Mature vegetation. Yeah, also, um, our new member brought up a good issue, and that is uh, as far as uh, safety to get emergency vehicles in between. You know, if you need a fire truck to, to get a little closer to the house or something, it's nice to have a little extra room on one side of the garage. Right. And then the height, uh, the height variance, Mark, what, what, what's allowed? You probably said it before and I spaced out. 15 feet to the midpoint of the peak, okay. of okay. the slope. And we had what, 17, three or something like that, or 19, 19, three. 19, two. 19, two. I put 19, three down just to Okay, give them that, that, give that's a quarter, and I figured it was about a quarter. So okay, mm -hmm. so that's a four. And I think you need that height in order to have storage spaces legal, because I saw in the drawing it looked like you've got a clear height on that second story of about seven and a half feet. They already brought it down from eight feet, which is often mm -hmm. used. So uh, I think they're taking steps with the shallow pitch and the lower mm -hmm. height to bring it as close to a lower height as they can. Yep. Right. And the second floor setback. Yep, and, and the second floor setback. Not as right. massive. Right. It, right, it reduces the mass, it reduces the volume of the building. Mm -hmm. All good points, so. Yep. And I, as I look at this, this looks like a very attractive mm -hmm. solution and improvement to the property and it's highly supported. Um, the fact that there isn't 
storage is the primary hardship and I think this is a well conceived solution. So I don't given the neighborhood and the set of conditions that exist on this street and we're not pushing the envelope on any anything from previous variances I think this looks like a a worthy project. Are you making a motion Bob? I could. Is that well let me is, is there any other I guess I should you know entertain is, is there a motion? I can make a motion to approve based on the fact that uh, there is not storage. Storage is the hardship. And the three conditions of increase in area, increase in height, and continuing the existing side yard setback all are part of the solution that yields a a project that's um, as good as probably can be done. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second, second it. Who are you recognizing as the second? Uh, Mark. Mark was the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. All right, then it, uh, congratulations, Paul. Your, your variance passed. Thank you, everyone. Um, with that, are there any other agenda items? There are none. Okay. Then do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 636? Make that motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. John and Bob? Yes. All right. Uh, meeting oh, adjourned. Does the board want to stick around and, or do we have enough information on Marty, Mark, in order to? Well, if you want to make a statement again, uh, that's fine. Uh, I think you had made, so I could put it at the end of the meeting. Um, I mean, in some ways it fits better at the beginning because it's it, there was no other agenda item. So I guess I'll put mm -hmm. it at the beginning, but if there's anything else somebody wanted to say or, or reflect as a consensus statement, that would be fine. You want to save it for our next meeting and put it on the agenda? Would that be easier for you? Oh, it's not a matter of easier. I think it's appropriate to do it now. Um, we could have Marty come to the meeting and thank him in person. We could have just logged on tonight. <laughs> well, you know, when, uh, when uh, John, uh, was retired. Yeah, they actually had uh, an award for him. Uh, yeah, and, and the mayor. I hope that he usually recognizes people uh, at some oh, point. Oh, that'd be nice. So I don't doubt that will be done. So I, I will have the minutes reflect uh, that the. Cons well, I don't know if I said we would say consensus. I'll I'll just simply say that zoning board members um, express their thanks. thanks to Marty Burkholder for his 18 years of service. Volunteer service. Yeah, eighteen years of volunteer oh, service. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty awesome. And uh, Mark, are you sitting in the conservancy? Am I? Uh, <laughs> look. Oh, yeah. Mark. No, the other Mark. Mark Opitz. Yeah, Mark is. Mark's, <laughs> been, kicked, Mark's been kicked out of his house. <laughs> no, yeah. He's got that green. <laughs> he's got a great look. Yeah. Oh, that's beauty, that's, right? He's, that's at, he's at Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, all right. All right. I'll catch right, you guys done? later. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, right, everybody. Right. All right. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night.